Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about leader follower database replication. This is one of the more common database replication technique. If you want to know about what database replication is and how does it work, I would recommend you watch the previous video where I go over a very high level explanation of what database replication is. With that being said, let's dive deeper into how does this uh, particular system work. So let's say that you have four database machines. That means you have the same data in four different machines. That's what I mean by replication. You're going to replicate your data in four different machines so that when one of the machine is down, you can serve the requests coming to your application from the other machine. Of course, you want all the four machines to have the same data, right? So in a leader follower replication system, one of the machine is called the leader, while the others are called followers or replicas. You can call them either follower or replica. In this video, I'm going to refer to them using both of them. So yeah, just know that when I'm talking about follower, it also means replica and vice versa. Okay, so if you take a look at the diagram I have over here, you can see I have my backend server to the left, and then all the writes are going to the leader, and then the leader is replicating the same data into the replica. So I have replica one, replica two, you can call them follower one, follower two, two. So how exactly does this rep replication happen? So in a leader follower architecture, all the writes in your application are going to the leader node. So if you see over here, uh, I can zoom in one more level. There you go. Uh, all right. So your backend server, all the writes that your users are writing to your application, they are going to the leader. Now the leader has the most recent data. What the leader does after it gets the data is repl replicate this data into the replicas or followers asyn uh, asynchronously, right? What this means is when the server is writing to the leader, it does not care about all these fancy replication processes. All it cares about is whether the data has been written successfully to the leader node as long as that's successful, it just forgets about it and moves on. In the background, asynchronously, the leader is going to replicate the data into all the different replica nodes so that the replica nodes have the same data that the leader has. Okay, so yeah, all writes are handled by the leader. The data changes in the leader are streamed to the replica or followers. This replication, that means copying the changes, the data changes in the leader into the replica, this whole replication process, this happens asynchronously. So you should expect some delay, maybe not too long, but some delay uh, where the leader has the most up-to-date data, but the replica does not. Okay, so the next question is, how are the data changes streamed, right? So over here, you can see I have the leader and it just says replicates, but we don't really know how it works. So the most common technique is to use Kafka to do this replication. Uh, there, is, there is a concept of change data capture or CDC. What this means is your leader database, whenever data changes or new data is added to the leader database, it goes ahead and writes messages to a Kafka topic. These messages are called change data capture. Each message can be an insert statement or an update statement or a delete statement. So the leader, whenever some data changes, writes whatever data changed into Kafka. And then you have the replica database one and two. They have a connector. Uh, I think I have a video about it. Uh, you can use a Debezium connector or some connector 
which is essentially a piece of software that can read messages from Kafka and apply the changes into the replica database. By doing so, what happens is whenever a piece of data changes in the leader database, that change is reflected in the Kafka message and the connectors that are around the replica nodes can read from that Kafka message and apply the change to the replica node so that all three of your nodes, the leader, replica one and replica two, have the most up-to-date data. Okay, uh, so yeah, common technology used is Kafka and based on the leader's node, because the leader is the one that is getting all the uh, updated data at the in the first place, right? So every write is happening at the leader. So the leader is the first point of contact for any new data. And the leader writes uh, these new data into Kafka and your replica nodes can just read uh, from this Kafka message and then just update their own data. Okay, so the next one is how are reads and writes differentiated now that you have one leader and two replica? It's very simple. So all your writes are gonna go to the leader node. So the leader accepts all the writes coming to your application. Uh, so of course the leader node has a lot of work because it has to write this new data and then replicate the data across to the replica machines. So to uh, save the leader some work, what you do is uh, make all the read traffic of your application be served from the replica nodes, right? So what this means is in an architecture like this, all your writes are gonna be going to this leader node and all your reads are gonna be served by the replica node, so replica one and two. So all the writes are being served by this one node and all the reads are being served by replica one and replica two. Okay, uh, typically in an application, you usually have a much higher read volume than write. So it makes more sense to have multiple replica to handle higher read traffic. And one leader is usually good enough to handle all the writes. Of course, this uh, does uh, vary from application to application. I'm just talking about a very typical application with a relational database. All right, so Postgres, MySQL, both uses a pattern like this. Most relational databases, even outside of Postgres, MySQL, uh, you will find them following a very similar pattern where you have one leader and then multiple replica. Okay, so there is one big problem that you should keep in mind when implementing the leader follower architecture. That is something called replication lag. Now let's talk about replication lag, okay? So what is replication lag? Uh, by definition, replication lag is the delay between a write happening on the leader and being reflected on a follower. So if you recall from the diagram over here, all the writes are happening on the leader and then this write is being replicated into your replica databases asynchronously. By asynchronously, I mean it can be a few nanoseconds, a few milliseconds, even a few seconds, right? If your system is suffering uh, high latency for some reason, you can have a few seconds before the data from leader is replicated into your replica. And that period where your leader has the most up-to-date data, but your replica does not, that period is called the replication lag because your replicas are lagging behind the most up-to-date data. This is very common in a very high write intensive application. That means if, if you have an application where you're writing very, very fast, that means you're gonna be hammering the leader node with writes every second and uh, maybe your Kafka infrastructure can keep up with the high volume of writes, that would mean that the replica has uh, some delay before it has the most up-to-date data from the leader. 
okay? So that is pretty much replication lag. That means it is the delay between your leader having the most up-to-date data and your replica having the same data. Now, uh, now that we know what the problem is, let's talk about a few of the solutions. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about them in very high level. I'm pretty sure you can spend videos and videos uh, learning about how these work, but at very high level, there are uh, three different things you can do to deal with or get around replication lag. The first one is over provision the Kafka clusters to handle peak traffic. So I, I already talked about one of the most common ways to replicate the data from leader to replica is by using Kafka. Let's say at a given day, uh, you have only certain peri periods of time, maybe peak lunch hour or dinner hour, where your application gets very busy. So you can over provision your Kafka cluster so that when those peak hours hit, like those lunchtime or dinner time, you have enough Kafka uh, uh, clusters running and enough resources invested in those clusters so that when you get this very high intensive write period, your Kafka infrastructure can keep up and scale up very quickly to accommodate the higher throughput of writes and make sure that your replica database gets all the writes very, very quickly. So that's a common way. It is expensive, but it's common uh, to over provision your Kafka cluster so that during peak traffic, there is no replication lag because Kafka is scaling up very, very quickly. The other one is for critical reads, force the reads from leader node, not replica. So if you remember, I already talked about your leader is gonna be accepting all the writes and all the reads are gonna be served by your replica. But let's say that you know that uh, during peak traffic, there will be some replication lag, which means your replica nodes might not have the most up-to-date data, right? But you have this use case where regardless of the time of the day, you want to make sure that you are reading the most up-to-date data. So to do that, what you can do is you can maybe use an HTTP header or some system like that where for those critical use cases, I'm not talking about all use cases, just the very critical ones where you need the latest data immediately. You can override this architecture where you're reading from replica. In those use cases, instead of reading from the replica, you can also read from the leader. Of course, this comes with problems. The leader during those peak periods is always uh, is already busy trying to like handle all the writes. Now, if you're also reading from the leader, just to avoid the replication lag, you're putting more stress and pressure on your leader node, which can get very, very uh, complex and like resource intensive for the leader. And you might just end up making the whole replication lag worse because now your leader has to do much more work than it typically does. Okay, and the last one, which in my opinion is the best solution, is design your systems accepting the replication lag. Because you know for a fact that at some point of the day or any time there can be a replication lag, you accept the fact and then you design your systems knowing that there is replication lag. So when you're designing the system, you want to be careful and you want to handle the replication lag issue accordingly. So you take it for granted that there will be replication lag at some point. It can happen every day. It can happen once a month. But you know for sure that at some point your application might suffer from replication lag. And you design the system in such a way that this replication lag, no matter how often it happens, can be dealt with safely. So that's the, I would say, best solution, knowing that you have an architecture where you have replication lag. Instead of over-provisioning or reading from leader, you just design the system. 
Of course, there might be use cases where there is no way you can design it like that. And in cases like that, may, maybe over provisioning Kafka or serving the critical reads from leader makes sense. But more often than not, I think it's significantly better if you can design your system, keeping in mind replication lag is something you need to uh, kind of handle. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good idea about how the leader follower database replication work. I am going to have another video coming up next week or maybe later this week, which is going to talk about the other kind of replication. Uh, that's the leaderless or peer to peer replication. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about the leader follower model, please put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.